When working in Primavera P6, most people only look at a project schedule in terms of days. What day activities actually start and finish, or are projected to start or finish. It is important to be aware that P6 is always calculating your schedule not based on days, but on hours and minutes. In some cases, this can lead to results you might not be expecting. Let's take a quick look at a few examples, which could help you track down the root cause of any inconsistencies you're seeing in your schedule. First things first, let's set P6 to display time down to the minute. We do this by going under the Edit, User Preferences menu, selecting the Dates tab, choosing a button that displays time, I like to use 24 hour time, and clicking the Show Minutes box. Now we click on Close and go back to the schedule. You'll see that all the dates now include the time, but you might need to widen your date columns in order to really see it. Now let's take a look at how time settings can impact a schedule and how to identify it. Here's our first example. Now if you take a look at this completion milestone, it's showing as finishing on the required date of October 1st, 2017. But we're seeing one day of negative float. Doesn't seem to make sense, right? Well, let's look at the actual time settings of the milestone constraint. Under Status, Constraints, you can see this constraint is actually set as having to finish on or before midnight on the morning of October 1st. So even though we're showing work completing on October 1st, it's technically past the constraint and thus showing is negative. If we reset this constraint to be at the end of the workday on the required date, recalculate the schedule, now we're showing zero float as we would expect. Let's take a look at another example. Now, in this case, we've got the same situation. Finishing on the completion date required, but still one day of negative float. In this case, if we check this milestone constraint, we're going to see it's set properly. Constraints not required until the very end of the working day. But there's somewhere else we can check for a very similar issue the overall project must finish by constraint. Go back under projects, look at our project in the dates tab, and in this case this project must finish by date is set for midnight on the morning of the required date. We can fix this by setting it at least to the end of the workday. Go back to the schedule, recalculate again, and now once again we're back to seeing the expected correct float values. Now let's take a look at another area where time settings can have an impact, calendars. Calendars are usually set up by default so that each day represents one workday of duration, but this can be modified. For example, you might have calendars representing crews working longer working hours maybe 10 or 12 hour workdays, or you might have calendars representing shorter workdays based on access restraints or other restrictions. Let's open up a third example. Now in this case, we can see things are going the opposite direction. We're showing completion on the required date of October 1st, but with one day of float shown. We can take a quick look and see this is not an issue with either a constraint, as we saw before, or with the project must finish by. Both of those are set for just before midnight on the required date. Now, taking a quick look, you might see that something looks a little different with some of the early start and finish dates though. Instead of all the activities starting at the beginning of the workday and ending at the end of the workday, 
We've got activities that start and end at more irregular times. This is because of the working hour settings of one calendar. If you take a look down at this granite curving activity, it is set on a calendar where during the time frame when this work occurs, work starts at 8 a.m. and goes until 6 p.m. It's a 10 hour work day. Let's go into the calendar settings. Here's this project's calendar. If we modify to look at the details, here we can see we're showing a total of 10 hours working and the detail showing 10 hour workday. So this is the only activity in the example schedule set to use this calendar. But as a result of the two extra hours per workday for this activity, it's showing as beginning the same day as its predecessor. And when this activity finishes, it's going to complete at noon due to the extra time worked each day. Now its successor activity is beginning at noon and then also finishing at noon. This is going to propagate right down the chain of all subsequent activities, culminating with our project completion here being achieved at noon on October 1st. Now based on our calendar settings, this is actually half a day of float, which then gets rounded up to display as one based on the fact that we don't have any decimal places on display. This isn't something that's technically inaccurate, so it's good to be aware of. If you're working in a schedule in which you've defined your own calendars, you're likely aware of any potential irregularities like this. But if you're reporting on a schedule built by another party, you might need to familiarize yourself with their calendar and time settings to ensure you're providing the most accurate data. I hope this video gave you some extra insight on the time settings in Primavera P6. Please visit the PMA Consultants website for more clips on best scheduling practices.